we are all sitting next to a pool of tears. While you are listening to me, you are sitting next to a pool. And while I'm speaking, I'm standing next to my own pool. And every pool is unique. Some are deeper, some are darker, some are clearer. Some were caused by what was done to us and some are the result of our own doing. And these pools remind us of the losses we suffer and we've experienced throughout our life. This is one of the tears of Claudia. She lost her partner during COVID. This is Maurice's tears, the loss of a marriage, a difficult divorce. This is the tears of Andrea, the loss of her childhood because she was violently abused. This is Victor's tears, the loss of a safe space and the unfulfilled longing for a partner. And this, this is Lauren's tears after she was rejected by a very close friend. An artist in the Netherlands launched a project to transform the tears of loss into works of art by inviting people to catch their tears and send it to him. And then he would take photos of the tear under a microscope. And isn't it ironic that someone creates something beautiful out of something that is so painful? This is the good news. The Lord can turn a dry desert into a beautiful land of restoration. And as different as our pools of tears may be, they can lead us into a new life of change and of growth. And this is how God works. He turns sorrow into joy. He turns sadness and loss into something beautiful. Our scripture today is Psalm 126. And I invite you to read it with me as it comes up on the screen. When the Lord brought back his exiles to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And the other nations said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. We don't know exactly what event the author is referring to here, but we do know that the Lord did something wonderful for the people of Israel. But then there's a sudden turn. Suddenly, They are in need and they find themselves in the desert. The word translated for desert here is Negev, the Negev Desert. That's still the name today. It's a dry, barren region in the south of Israel. And suddenly they're there and they experience this barrenness, maybe physically and spiritually, emotionally. And isn't this how losses often come our way, unexpectedly, suddenly, And when they come, we all go to different places when we suffer loss. And it seems to me that that there are three places mainly that we go to when we do experience and face loss. The first place is denial. We just keep running because it's so painful. It's too painful. And I'm afraid that the pain will engulf me when I come to a standstill. And so I find ways in my work, a hobby, an activity to just escape. We try to ease the loss by doing things like drinking more, eating more, so that we don't have to sit with it. Another place is that we go to is when we try to overcome the loss, overcome it, the emotions. And I do it by cutting myself off. 
I can't count the number of times I've been with people experiencing grief and loss, and then they apologize for their tears. I'm sorry I'm crying. I'm, I'm going to pull myself. To, I just need to get, pull myself together. It's weird. Deep down, it's like we see sadness as a sign of, of weakness. And when we look at it like this, and when we try and, and, and um, go above or cut off our emotions, this will, this can, it can lead to great problems. One of them, the problem with this is that you don't just cut off the difficult emotions, you also cut off the good ones. You don't feel anything. A third place I see we go to, we can go to, is over-identification. That's when I'm just so taken up with the loss and sadness that I can't function. I fall into a black hole. I can't make decisions. And it feels like I'm drowning in my own pool of tears. So what should we then do with our losses? Where should we go? And I think there's another place we can, we can go. And although I think this place takes so much courage and so much faith, this place, the path to this place leads to growth and life. A life like you've never known. A life better than the one you had. You see, your loss can be a watershed moment in your life where you can either stagnate or you can change and grow and experience how God transforms your desert into a place of refreshing springs. So maybe today, four invitations from our text to help us go to this place, this other place of life and growth and transformation. And the first is to accept there's nothing that we can do in life to, to indemnify us from losses. They're a part of our life. Everything in this world comes to an end. Your body, your youth, your wholeness. We see it in nature, seasons, cycles of life. Jesus says life is like a cloud of fog. James, his brother, says, look at the grass. It's there for a season and then it's gone. John, the beloved disciple of Jesus, said, everything in this world will pass away. It's a truth of life and, and it's something that I don't, I can't just know it. I need to accept it because it's going to happen to you. It's going to come your way. But somehow there's something in us that resists. And we don't want to accept it. As Christians, we often think, well, I serve God. The Lord helps me with these things. It won't happen to me. I won't get sick. I won't lose my house. I won't go through setbacks because He protects me. Yes. But why do you serve Him? Do you serve Him for what you can get from Him? Or do you serve Him because He is God? And God works in ways that we don't understand. If I can accept that the brokenness of this world, the losses of this world, the losses of my life, they will come, then I can start working through the grief. And here's a big thing. Here's a big message, good news. Your grief will also pass. The desert and the pain you are in will also come to an end but you need to accept it. And when I've accepted it, I need to feel it. I need to feel the sorrow and the grief and the pain. The psalmist says that the Lord can turn sorrow into joy. And here's the thing of grief. It just comes over you. It's a feeling and an emotion that you have no control over. You can't control when it comes, how it comes, to what extent it comes. No control. In this respect, it's a lot like love. It takes you by surprise. But then, then I need to decide. Am I going to allow and feel and experience? Or am I going to cut myself off? Am I going to resist it? And this is a tremendously important moment. 
You see, when Jesus talks about, about this, it's, it's very strange. He goes against the thinking of his time, but also ours when he says, blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. He says joy comes through grieving, through weeping, not by avoiding it, but going through it. This is his way. We see it. He suffers great losses. He mourns his best friend, Lazarus, who dies. Think about it. Jesus knows that Lazarus will be resurrected, but he still cries. He takes it and he feels it and he doesn't choose a pass around it. Near the end of his life, the loss of freedom, the loss of his reputation, he experiences great anxiety and stress. He feels it and he shares it with his disciples. He says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And they're there with him. And then he surrenders and finally he loses his life, but he's resurrected. And the father gives him a new life that is better. The desert of tears turns into a place of refreshing springs. When I felt it, I'm invited to share it, to give words to the loss. The psalmist says that you will reap what you sow. The New Living Translation says they weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with a harvest. Share your losses. We have to give words to our pain. Losses need to be processed. And one way to do this is to share the story behind your tears. And when we do this, we begin the sacred journey where our desert turns into, is being transformed into a place of refreshing springs. So share it with God. The Psalms teach us how to do this. Consider for a moment some of the sentences we encounter when we read the Psalms. To God I call aloud, hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen, I'm crying for help. How long, O God? Now you can think, yeah, but the Lord knows. He knows exactly how I feel because he's God. Yes, a parent knows when their child is hurting. But what happens when the parent asks the child to share what they are experiencing? What happens when I ask my child what's going on and I listen and they, they start opening their hearts to me? Connection and intimacy and trust gets established so tell him, tell the Lord, ask him, Lord, renew this desert. Share with him, Lord, I grieve because my marriage is in pain. Lord, I grieve because I feel as if I'm completely in the dark. I grieve because I don't know which way to go. Lord, I grieve because I'm far away from you. I cannot find you anywhere. Something happens, we find healing when we share our tears, not only with God, but also with other people. Almost always when we take this very courageous step, we'll experience great relief and freedom. We have the courage to do this. We no longer feel alone. When we bring our losses to God in the presence of another person, there seems to be a response from God that helps us to know you're not alone. And sometimes we even begin to sense that God shares our broken heart and cries with us in our pain and loss. I was just thinking about my own story. You know, some losses are just too complex that you can't try and process them on your own. You need others. And I'll always be grateful for those special people who have stood with me in my losses, listened without judgment. To, they listened to what I shared and held it in sacred confidence. And these people included a therapist, my spiritual guide, my friends, my family, my faith community. And each of them at different times and in different ways have been witnesses of the tears that I sow and witnesses of the harvest that I've gathered. Speak, word your pain and loss, and then trust. Trust. You see, Jesus says when, when you cry, you will be comforted. You're not going through it alone. There's the, he gives us his spirit, the Holy Spirit, the great comforter, and he says the comforter will minister to you. Paul gives advice. He says in Thessalonians, we don't mourn like people who have no hope. 
So cry, but don't give up hope. Can you believe that God is working through this? He's taking me to joy, to great peace and joy. I may, might feel like I'm losing a part of my life and my identity now, but he's making something new. Can you trust that he's busy in the desert? He's busy renewing and restoring. As Psalm 84 says, when they walk through the valley of the weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs. The autumn rains will clothe it with blessings. With blessings. The Hebrew word for dry valley is baka. This is translated as the valley of weeping or tears. And he says the Lord will change it to Baraka, the valley of springs and of joy. Can you trust that God is busy transforming your Baraka into Baraka? When you are crying, it's a sign of new things to come. Trust in him. Where are the places that you go to when you are suffering loss? Here is a way to new life. And Lord, we ask that you will help us to turn to this, to your way, that we can follow you. Give us the courage, give us the strength and the wisdom to start this healing journey. Give us our faith, Lord. Give us faith that we can trust that you are working behind the scenes and that you are transforming. You are transforming our desert into a place of refreshing springs. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today. If you are finding yourself in the desert, please won't you contact us. We'd love to pray with you. And if you'd like pastoral support, you need support, support, we are here, please contact us. You don't have to go through this desert alone. Receive the blessing. The love of God our Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence and comfort of His Spirit remain with us all. Amen.